Thanks, Mike. With this course, the fabulous facilities and fun social events, Silver Creek really is Silicon Valley's hidden treasury. Now to give you a little edge when you play the course, here's Mike again with his insights, changes, and strategy for each hole. I know for me, the worst rounds that I've ever had or the most negative rounds are not necessarily the biggest numbers I've ever put out there, but the golf course where you played average at best, and the thing was just you can't remember any golf holes. There was no stimulation. You just get off and say, man, I could have... You know, I could have gone shopping or something. I mean, you know, it's kind of a waste of my time. I, a, I just don't want people to play our golf courses and come off of it feeling that. Number one, we first looked at it there. It, it, the biggest problem with number one is there just was not a landing area. There's no place to put the ball off the tee. So what we wanted to do there, first and foremost, was kind of introduce at least a couple of level areas where you could land the golf ball and stand on a relatively level uh, stance and hit to the ring. Um, we, do, we did introduce uh, a little bit uh, put bunker a little bit more in play on the left hand side and, and kind of visually kind of squeeze your tee shot between that bunker and, and you can't get it too far right or you have to deal with that big oak tree that's down there and the bunker that's on the right hand side of the green so it became a little bit more strategic there where you actually kind of want to try to keep it if, if, you're, if you're playing for, for ultimate strategy you want to keep it as close to that bunker as you can and try to kind of straighten out your shot going into that green and not have to deal with that bunker. Number two when we looked at it actually is a pretty good little hole. It's a neat little short, short par four. Um, we thought by moving the tees over, we could get a little bit better uh, view of, of the landing area. And by there, the bunkers and the fairway just were kind of out of play. We just squeezed them in to bring them a little bit more in play. And there again, the, the, the same type of thing. If you, if you want to try to get it close as you can to that right-hand bunker over there, then obviously you have a little bit better angle into the green and, and um, so just a little bit kind of the thought behind that's a great contours in it when we first uh, just the way the hole was we just tried to accentuate that with some of the mowing line the biggest problem we saw at number three was no alternative way for the weaker player or the shorter player to try to play that golf hole aside from throwing it right at the green and it's well bunkered on the right hand side if you miss it at all right you're going to go in that bunker which is a great strategic bunker um, but there's no leeway on the left-hand side uh, for, for the, any other kind of player to make a, a, a different kind of a try of shot in their run-up shot. Well, even though the third hole was the longest hole in the golf course, we did see a need for the big player, the big hitter, to even move the tee back a little bit further. Um, this had a lot to do with the landing area in general, trying to bring the fairway bunker a little bit more into play and making it actually a little bit fairer for, for that player. Number four, it, um, you know, I'll probably always tell this story because it sticks out in my mind, is one of the, one of the members that the, they got an opportunity to comment on the whole said that number four was basically a good way to get from three to five. And, you know, when you hear something like that, that's like the ultimate challenge. Well, we're going to do something here to make people remember this golf hole. And um, I think we did. Uh, in addition of a large bunker with some natural kind of grasses and features in it, um, something that is, is visually kind of vivid. Uh, they all add to that element of, of uh, remembrance and, and, and uh, something that sticks out in your mind and is unique. Number five, we, when we first saw, obviously it was a very, it was a good hole. Um, pretty tough hole. As a matter of fact, I think the first time we played it, that was, uh, we played with uh, three of the members and that was their first comment. This is a good hole. And, you know, it turned out to be, they were right. <laughs> the problem came, I think, on that golf hole for the average or less than skilled player that uh, once they got to the point where they have to carry the barranca, there was no type of fairway on the other side of the barranca to, to again, run up a shot. If you don't have the the uh, the game to, to play the kind of, to get it up in the air and throw it at the flag there, uh, which is maybe, you know, 15 to 20 percent of the membership, then you had no other way to play that golf hole. So the driving force between how to make that even a better hole was to kind of open up the barranca so you could see where you're going and create some kind of run up area on the other side of it so that there is, an, again, an alternate way for, for people to play that golf hole. Number six is a good example of one of the overall kind of complaints and or problems that were conveyed to us by the membership. 
uh, 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 first of all, there were some par fives that everyone liked to group together, which were basically didn't do any thinking. They were not that challenging. They had that look that you were just kind of boring off the tee. And it, number six was had had all that going for it. Um, it had all the trees planted just in a row going down the hole where you had these beautiful contours that uh, you weren't able to use because to try to use the contour up on the right hand side of that of, of the driving area there was a bunker there so right where you wanted to kind of go and, and at least be able to use the contour to try to help you play the golf hole you couldn't do it um, so that that was a problem there the trees just de everything looked like a bowling alley right there so how you know the first thing we try to do to get some a little bit of aesthetic movement to the hole is kind of get rid of that stuff and let the kind of the natural bigger trees do that um, and and then come into the, a little bit more of the strategy of the golf hole especially for the second shot so how do you take that and introduce a little bit of excitement to it and a little bit of, of mental challenge to it and, and make again using the fairway mowing lines to kind of create a little bit more movement and you it's definitely have to place the shot a little bit more now uh, so you have to think about what club you're going to hit and where you're going to play and, and where you're going to miss it if you're going to miss it. The best thing we try to do was to take your eye off of it a little bit by trying to combine it into the golf hole uh, by using it as a kind of a, a play feature slash cart path access trail, which is a little bit more natural looking, a little bit more different definitely to here than, than was done here before but a little bit more reminiscent of some of the things you see, say down in Monterey, Cypress Point or whatnot, little, little sand trails going through there, kind of a homey type of touch. And, uh, so that was kind of our way of, of, of taking care of that little, that little problem of uh, instead of having to look at concrete and, and incorporate it into the golf hole. And again, add a little bit of excitement to the right-hand side with some, moving some bunkers, getting a little bit closer in play and accentuating that with our little heart path thing on the left-hand side. So kind of move your eye into the hole draw your eye over there to those really neat rocks that were over there you couldn't even see them before and, and the really neat oak trees that are growing in there so that's, it's just like painting a picture I mean when, when you paint a picture and people talk about composition in a picture one of, the, one of the key things about composition is eye movement through a piece you know whether in, in you know artists that's that's what you do is you you, you pick a spot and where you want to start people moving through a piece and that's how you travel through and it's the same thing with the golf hole um, straight away hole uh, not much challenge to the second shot, uh, little or no thinking involved in the second shot, and um, although it was a neat green, had some it had a neat little tear in it, and it was it was pretty neat green. It, we we just thought it could have been more dramatic. So w w what we did there was was took the uh, added that short bunker on the left hand side, which is you know some people think is kind of silly, but. It, it, it's, it's what we call a setup bunker, and so the hole appears instead of being straight away to kind of set up over here and put a little bit more movement to it. Again, adding some bunkers in the second landing area, right at a place where you could get sloppy before and hit any kind of shot up there. Now, and I've had dozens of members tell me, "Yeah, you know, you really got to think about it now. What, that's good. That's that's what golf's supposed to be about." The back of that green, there were a couple of trees planted back there that, if you could remove that, it, to me, one of the most exciting and kind of a shot that will draw you up a little bit is when you can't tell what happens behind a green. And, and we just thought that was just an exciting element to add, what we call you know, zero horizon type uh, situation where it looks like you see the ed front edge of the green and the flagpole and you, there's just sky behind it. And uh, although there's, you know, it's not unplayable by any means back there, it's just a scary look. I know last night when I was out there I looked at it again and that's it's a scary, it will scare you looking at that shot. So why not try to introduce that to a hole that people were kind of complaining about that it was kind of boring. Number nine was probably one of the most visually stunning holes out here. Um, the only problem being that you, you could, it wasn't taken advantage of. You couldn't really see it from where the T location where they used to be. Um, we got that beautiful little lake down there. Again, simply by kind of shifting things over a little bit, maybe 20 yards or so, you kind of start to bring it all on. And it just makes for a more exciting, more stimulating golf hole. And then, of course, you get down to the second shot into the green, uh, where you had a nice little bulkhead in the lake, but the green was set way off of the lake. And what that does, a couple things, it doesn't take, you don't take advantage of the water, number one, it's, it's kind of pretty in there. Um, and number two, it gets the water so far out of play that it really is just hurting a really bad shot. 
So the challenge there was to kind of get without totally redoing the green was to make it feel like the green's getting closer to the water and actually add, we actually added on a back section of the water so the water does come up a little bit more into direct play for, um, for someone who's trying to negotiate the corner right there. Um, and, and I think what, what we did there works very well. Number 10 was probably, I guess in force in, in my mind, was probably the worst hole out here. Uh, just in the fact that we just didn't see any way you could play it. The biggest challenge there was to come up with some kind of visible landing area off the tee where you could get kind of comfortable with picking out a spot and say, yeah, well, that's where I got to hit it. So the first thing there was establish a landing area. Again, as a number one where you could be halfway level and, and try to negotiate a shot into the green. Then the second challenge there was to create a little bit more of an angled approach into the green by shifting the bunkers over where for the better player, now he's got to negotiate a corner of a, a hazard which is what you know what we call the diagonal or angles of play. And for the player who doesn't have that shot, then to move the fairway actually is bizarre as it seems further up the hill so they can try to use that hill to try to run the shot down off of and roll it onto the front of the green, which um, people I know still may look at it and don't think it can be done, but I was out there a couple days ago with Jay and he put down a couple of balls and he hit, they're just perfect. So again, it's a still a fairly, you have to hit kind of a skilled shot. It's, I don't think you can, it's one of those things where you can just get sloppy and throw it up on the hill and it runs down on the green. There's nothing, I mean, where's the challenge? There's no challenge to that. You still have to hit a decent shot, but it can be done for the person who cannot hit it straight up in the air and drop it on the flag. So I think 10 worked out really well.